Today I'm working on measuring high values of resistance, uh, what uh, the meters to do that are sometimes called meg-ohm meters, that's what these two are, or in some cases they're called insulation resistance testers and uh, they have different names, but basically the idea is they're designed to measure resistances in the hundreds of meg-ohms and I reviewed or did a mini review on this meter a few weeks ago that has a 100 meg range which is a little bit unusual but not out of uh, uh, not out of sight for uh, multimeters but uh, you notice that it sometimes says overload and sometimes it says 95 meg ohms and what I'm reading is a string of resistors that I've soldered together. Starts with a 22 ohm, 22 meg, and then a string of 10 megs. And I can, with this meter, I can get all the way out to 95 meg. When I go to the next position, which is here, you'll notice that it stays in OL or overload. In other words, it is truly a 100 meg max on this meter. But the purpose isn't really to re-review this meter. It really is to show you why that if you want to measure anything bigger than 100 meg ohms, you probably need to go to one of these meters that are uh, a little more suited to that because uh, the one on the left is called the VC60B and it will measure up to 2,000 mega ohms, but to do that it has to apply a thousand volts to the to the circuit. The way these meters work is they have a low voltage battery that they run on, but then they have a uh, a step up circuit that boosts the voltage to, in the case of these two meters, the voltage goes to a thousand volts. You can buy insulation resistance testers that go even higher. This one, if I remember right, cost about forty dollars and this one cost about twenty-five. This is the BM500A and it was also the subject of, uh, <laughs> I ordered it through Amazon but from a Chinese supplier and it took about 10 days longer than the, the promised uh, dates. They gave me a range and the range expired and then 10 more days uh, went by and then finally one day it showed up. Uh, part of that is the tracking from China is sporadic and apparently Amazon doesn't really watch much uh, what those suppliers do. So, at any rate, that's, uh, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to show you this meter and this meter testing some high uh, ohmage. First, we'll use this string and go up to the end of the string. And then we'll switch over to a high voltage probe that is, used to be used in television service work that contains a very large resistor. So, let's get on with that. So, the this uh, VC60B. I'm going to try to prop it up on a, on part of its stand there. It doesn't really come with a with a proper stand. This is just uh, the cover that goes over the top of this, and it, you can put it on the back when you're just uh, when you're using it, and then when you want to store it, you put this uh, this cover that I'm using. I'll show you that in a minute. So what I have is the probe connected to the same point. And one of the things about this meter is it actually has two, two modes. The, on the right side of the function switch are resistance and AC and DC voltage. Uh, and those are basically just like a multimeter. They only have single ranges, but it does allow you to measure voltages and to do that, you have to use the two middle terminals here. But if you want to measure high resistance, that is megohm resistance, you have to use the two outside uh, connections. And that's where this is connected right now. 
Then you connect the test probes and you push this test switch. Let me do it from over here. And you see it reads 96.4. Now if you rotate this switch clockwise, it locks in the test on position and notice that there's an LED here which warns you that there is high voltage. In this case 250 volts on the on the test probes. So that seems to work quite well. I'm going to try 500 volts. These resistors should be able to uh, take that. And we get about the same reading, about 96 meg ohms. So uh, we're going to come back to this meter in a little bit, but first let me do the same test with the, uh, the BM500, uh, 500A. So I have the BM500A connected to the same or 95 meg ohm position, and I'll uh, zoom in a little bit here, being careful not to touch the circuitry because although right now it's turned off, the uh, there's no indicator on this uh, on this meter that you have high voltage. So when you hit the the test button. There's, in this case, 250 volts on those test leads, but it doesn't warn you of that. Also, I noticed that this meter does not have a CAT uh, rating. At least it, if it does, it doesn't say it on the, uh, on the meter or in the manual. And therefore, you're sort of at your own risk if you use this meter, because uh, these are also used in... Uh, applications where you're testing insulation of very high voltage equipment, often uh, AC equipment that runs in the 440 volt, which uh, means a peak of uh, well over 500 volts with hundreds of amps of uh, potential current. So definitely lethal. And generally, if you work on those kinds of circuits, you should have a CAT4 meter. The 60B that I showed a minute ago is only a CAT 2 meter and it's rated to 600 volts. So, so I would not recommend either of these meters for someone who works on what is called service side of, a, uh, of an AC system. The, uh, but nonetheless, that's 95. Now I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to move to the end of the list of the string of resistors and try it again and you notice it reads 147 148 meg the uh, now of course that uh, that first meter I showed you the one in the blue case doesn't won't go anywhere near that high one of the nice things about the BM500 is it will let you test very high resistances with uh, the meter in the 250 volt or 500 volt position. As I'll show you a little later, you can't do that on the 60B. It only will test the very high resistances if you apply a full thousand volts. So let's turn this off now and put a different resistor on this meter. So I've connected a test probe that is designed originally for use on old vintage television sets, it will, re it will convert a multimeter into a high voltage meter. It's rated up to 40,000 volts. And what it consists of is a 1,000 mega ohm resistor in this part. And then a 1 mega ohm resistor in here. And you put your multimeter across the 1 meg, and you then therefore get a 1,000 to 1 voltage division. So let me zoom in here a little bit and, and turn on the, uh, the test position of the meter. And by the way, I notice now that the light, I thought it had a light. It's working. Maybe I didn't notice that earlier, but it does have a light that shows you when the high voltage is on. And you notice that it's reading roughly 1,000 uh, mega ohms, 990 
and bouncing around a little bit. But one of the nice features about this meter is it will read the very high mo uh, mega ohm range, in other words, the 2000 mega ohm, even in the 250 volt position. Let's go to the 500, and it reads that. By the way, at these impedances, any tiny capacitance, like in the test leads, takes a long time to charge up. That's why it starts out at a higher level and then drops off. So, And there's a thousand volts. So, uh, the nice thing about this meter is it will re read its full range across any of the voltages. Now we have this set to uh, connected to the 60B and let's measure the resistance using 250 volts. Notice it does not read. That is the way that this particular meter shows over range. So let's go to 500 volts once again. And by the way, I like the fact that the meter both shows you a red light and also beeps at you to warn you that there's high voltage on the test leads. Now let's go to 1000 volts. And there you see we can read that 1000 meg resistor, but only in the highest voltage position of this meter. So that is the, uh, the, the one weakness, if I would say, of this one. It is a CAT2 rated meter, so as long as you stay within that category of electrical equipment, uh, you're, you're observing proper precautions and all the other things you need to do, this should be a safe meter. Uh, but once again, CAT2 does not include the service side, that is the, the meter side, if you will, of electrical service. So I said earlier that I would show you how the, uh, the top of this works. This will fit either on the bottom like this when, it, when you're not using it, or will fit on the top when you are. So the, the VC60B, in my opinion, is the better tester, except for the fact that you do have to use a thousand volts to get the full 2000 meg rating of the meter. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I bought these meters mainly not because I want to work on uh, high voltage uh, electrical equipment, uh, motors and transformers and so on. I bought them really to do testing of capacitors in vintage equipment. That is uh, testing new capacitors and old capacitors, but that's a subject for another video. So I hope this has been helpful in maybe explaining a little bit about mag ohm meters and giving you a little bit of an idea of these two, these two meters. Once again, this one is the VC60B. This is the BM500A. Hope you enjoyed this. Maybe got a little out of it. Stay tuned for some more. Stay safe. Have a nice day.